clean your room of bad energy with the Vibe Spray. This is the Focus Group. It's the savvy side of 9 to 5. Listen. Bueller. 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 Laugh. <laughs> And learn. Negotiation. This is what you do in business. This is The Focus Group with Tim Bennett. S-T-A-U-N-C-H. And John Nash. Keep your clothes looking neat and clean. We're all business. Except when we're not. Get out of the way. Welcome to The Focus Group. John Nash here with my good friend and co-host, Mr. Tim Bennett. Find us here every Wednesday live from 1 to 2 p.m. Of course, that's on Facebook Live, YouTube, focusgroupradio.com is where all our media is stored so you could watch the show anytime you like really and for the time shift is the time shift is uh, audio is there as well and uh, be sure to check out our Tuesday audio podcast uh, which complements our Wednesday show it's called Unbuttoned it's about 20 minutes long three topics we tackle every Monday Tuesday get your week off to a, hopefully a smart and a fun start so here we are uh, and I uh, yeah here we are. <laughs> you hate the holidays. You know what? I was talking to Garrett. Hey, and we want to say hello to Garrett and Steve and Luba. Did I get that right? In the booth. Our team that is essential. And they have some cheer. Garrett's wearing a hat. There's, a, there's some dashes of color in there, right? All my cheer comes out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Tim's like... Sounded different than how I meant it. <laughs> you boys do all your holiday shopping or your Christmas shopping? You all celebrate Christmas? I had all plans to get everything done this weekend, and I did zero. <laughs> I've bought one thing. So, yeah, actually. For yourself. Uh, <laughs> Don't you find your well, buy stuff yeah. for yourself? Oh, I've been, I've been going to town on myself. I bought, I bought shirts. I bought some new socks. Yeah, I, I've announced to the world that, that I don't need anything. I'm not giving anything. And that's that. That's that. But I said to Garrett before the show, I said, you know, I don't hate the holidays. I really want to love them. I really want to like them. But I know it's going to sound, I just don't care. <laughs> it's, a, it's an egregious, like, outpouring of money. I just, why do I have to get swept up in this? You need to move somewhere. Like where? I don't know, Muslim country. And then I'll appreciate Santa more? Is that the, uh, I, I see the logic there, right? I'll well, move you, to. You, you could fast during Ramadan or something. <laughs> And I'll, and I'll wish the elves came with the sleigh to save me from this. You know, I was listening to the, the it's funny, you, well, not funny, I guess it's kind of a, a thing that popped in my head. I was listening to the big 80s channel or something, and they were doing the, um, do they know it's Christmas time? Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's from the, the British did yeah. that. What was that? Um, not, they know it's Christmas. Yeah, not Live Aid. I don't even know. What it was, was a money. It was for famine in Africa or something, right? No, they don't know it's Christmas. They don't celebrate it. They don't care. They're hungry. I mean, I was listening to the song when I thought about how absurd it really was. I was listening to the words, you know, they don't know. Feed the, the world, world, do they, they know? know? No, they don't know, and they don't care. They're hungry. <laughs> they don't want a plastic toy. They don't want a stocking. <laughs> but that can of beans might actually be useful. Yeah. They've been banging that song out. And then I had a horrible experience on Amtrak today, if anybody. A, a friend of mine, Renee, we were commiserating about how horrible Amtrak is. And uh, so they decided today to um, make unannounced stops and load the train up because there was something going on, I guess, in Baltimore. The last six months, service has been atrocious. So I had to sit on the floor. And the conductor's saying, like, oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm like, why are you t even taking tickets for all of us that are sitting on the floor? There were people lined the whole, I should have taken a picture, lined all holding on like you were on a subway car, and then people sitting. And uh, they were still taking tickets. And I said, oh, we had a train, you know, some train backups or whatever. And then this woman in front of me took her shoes off, and her feet stunk so bad. It was like, I thought it was bad yogurt. So I'm looking around, the other guy next, look at Garrett's face. The other, guy, <laughs> the other guy's looking at me, and I was like, well, someone didn't get a bath this morning. I mean, someone if your feet are that stinky, over, it, right? woo, you don't do that on an open, an open thing like that. Anyway, I was all tuned up about Amtrak. And then, if today I'll really go nuts if I get back on the train and the panhandlers are back on. That's the new thing out of New York, you know. People looking for eleven dollars and twenty-five cents for it's a the bus. The same people looking for the same eleven dollars, right? Yeah. So he's like eleven dollars and fifty cents, eleven dollars and sixty cents. Anyway, I got that out of my head. But Merry Christmas! Tis the season. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I was put in a very good mood 
over the last two weekends by ABC's airing of two of my favorite holiday classics of all time. The, and I saw my favorite of all time first, which Bob said, I got to make sure you see this at the beginning of December every year from now on. Santa Claus is coming to town. See, I don't remember the last time I saw that. Released in 1970. So I was wee kid and I and and for years before that the only puppet one you saw was Rudolph the Red-Nosed right. Reindeer same same group did Santa Claus is coming Bob thinks Santa Claus is coming down is creepy the winter warlock and Jessica and the birds and the songs but to me I love it and I was singing along is there a favorite song you have Yes, uh, the toy the first toy maker to the king it's a difficult responsibility when you accept you know, a decree from his majesty, you know, and it's about the, the clauses and how they make toys for the king. So I'm sitting and watching wow. TV and I'm singing the songs and Bob just looks at me, he goes, how do you even know the words? Yeah, really? I'm like, well, you know, that... You only saw it once a year because we didn't have, there was, was no called, rewind back nope. then, no discs. So another thing that I thought was interesting was... Um, that well, the Wizard of Oz gets a usual an airing at this time of year yeah. too. That I never I always thought that as more as a Thanksgiving or was that Gone with the Wind? They would uh, Thanksgiving. No, I always thought I always thought Wizard of Oz was Halloween Thanksgiving. Mm. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, before I forget, so we're driving in the car the other day, and out of nowhere, Bob just starts laughing, and he says, "I said, what are you laughing at?" He goes, "I was remembering the day we moved to the new apartment, and the the chatterbox." Okay. I have to explain this. Tim bought this thing called the Gay Chatterbox. Yeah, where is that thing? It's in a drawer up in, in my house. You got to bring it in for Garrett to play. Well, I did bring some stuff in. So it's got about 15 or 20 little buttons, and every time you push one, it says something. So Bob was laughing because when we moved, apparently that was in a box, and every time the movers moved the box, it kept pushing the same button. So, Garrett, I think the audio for that one is, who do you have to, to get a drink around here, might, might have been the clue. So this is what it actually says every time the movers move the box. Who do you have to blow to get a drink around here? <laughs> is that what the but, movers are here? Garrett, if you do that like two or three times, it's like... That, 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 that. Who do you have to blow to get a drink around here? Who do you have to blow to That's get it. a drink around here? <laughs> Who do you have to blow to get a drink around here? So, Garrett, that, that, so I start laughing. I said, Bob, I don't remember this happening. He goes, no, you were down at the car taking other stuff up and back. Are the movers laughing? I said, what did the movers do? And Bob goes, they were deadpan. Who do you have to blow to get a drink around here? So, Garrett, there's another one that we love that, that Bob made me. My guess is you can't do this now. Well, what's the other one I put up there? It's not homophobia, sugar. <laughs> Everyone hates you. <laughs> So our idea when we, when Tim found this, we were going to have this recorded, right? And we were going to have it our like Garrett or Steve could hit the button randomly and have this respond box to space something, and we would saying, we yeah. would talk to it, but well, that never got done. Maybe in the new year, but I don't know. <laughs> that never got done. I don't know Maybe if I don't year. know if you would be allowed to do it now. Would we be in trouble? Is that too? Uh, Did you get the like Spencer gifts? I got it at Spencer gifts probably. 10 years, Ten years ago, ago. So, yeah. but now it, it's obviously, well, I shouldn't say obviously, but it seems stereotypically queenie yeah. guy. And so maybe you're not allowed to do so, all this with the Me Too going, movement. And going back to the, going back to the move, stuff. Bob said these guys would, th th one guy puts the box down and it goes, who do you have to blow to get a drink around here? here? And then they move it two seconds later and it keeps doing its thing. And I said, who do you have to blow to get a drink around here? <laughs> So, the moving company clearly knows they're moving a gay couple, right? I mean, it's two guys. And then the box starts talking. He laughed. I don't know how many miles we were laughing at that. Because I said they had to crack this. Nope, they were deadpan. And, and over the 15 phrases, is that was the, the one. It was the of all the ones the, I could have picked. Yeah, it was a button in the top That's row, funny. left hand side. You have the little box? Did you bring it in? I didn't bring it in with me, but it's still in its cardboard because you could still. Maybe put we'll it. give that to Garrett and Steve, and they can load it in, and then they could have a conversation with us. <laughs> well, that was the trick. See, I did record each one. Right. But was labeling each one. So that you knew so what that, button to hit. Anybody You're making kinda, a conversation. Yeah. So that anybody could, you could do what they call a soundboard. Like Garrett has software to do a soundboard, and that's like buttons you push. But I thought like. Like that one. Who do you have to blow to get a drink around here? How would you label that? Blow. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd have to know. That well, you it... would know it enough to know. The boys know. They know what to hit. <laughs> the, the boys. And by, as we end this calendar year, it might, it should be noted that a lot of feedback we get is about the boys in the booth. Yeah, the and and the they're booth. beloved. The booth crew is beloved. 
More so than us, apparently, on some occasions. Who do you have to blow to get a drink around here? <laughs> there you go, Garrett. <laughs> maybe what we'll do, John, and we've talked about this, in April, maybe for April Fools, the boys in the booth will come do the show, and you and I will run the board. The board, the, well, Garrett's yeah. shaking his head. Steve is smiling. He's laughing, and Garrett's just smiling and shaking his head like a Cheshire cat. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. Because we all know it's going to happen. That it's going to be a frozen camera. There's not going to be any of this fancy back and forth stuff. Unless you just said, John, this is the button you push to go uh, three-quarter view, whatever. I'll put it on dummy mode. It'll be very easy. <laughs> well, I need dummy mode. John, dummy mode. John, John likes to move. I, I need simple. I need on off. As long as there's a lever or something, I could be like George Takei, Mr. Sulu on the bridge of the Enterprise. Hey, um, before I forget, we want to mention a partner of ours here on the Focus Group, Hawthorne.co, H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E.co. Uh, men's grooming products. Tim and I have been using them for several weeks now, actually. Uh, we were sent uh, soap deodorant that doesn't have any aluminum in it, right? And right. that aluminum chloride. Um, I got shampoo, you got conditioner, yeah. and then hand-selected colognes, uh, work and play. I think our scents are a little bit different that we got for... Yeah, and I like the... Um, I, I initially said that I liked the play, play one, but now I kind of like, like the work, work one. So I'm going back and forth. But they're both very good, and they... So you answer a little quiz, and... Uh, certain things that you like, the way they smell or foods you like or whatever, and then they build this. I think they said there's over 50,000 combinations that yep. it could be. And they build a profile for you, and that's how they send you the, the scents, as well as some of the other grooming products for men. It's at hawthorne.co. And uh, right now, you get 10% off if you use our code FOCUS, which is F-O-C-U-S at checkout. And the one thing that we want to stress is you don't have to sign up for a recurring subscription like yeah. some of these things. So you could go in and give it as a gift. It's a one-off. You could get the you soap. Do one-off. You can go in and buy. I know John likes the soaps. I do, too. Maybe go buy some extra soap if you wanted to, if you gave it as a gift. But, uh, Just you to tell you how much the soap impacted the household, It's ours is down to, like, you know, it's a, really? big, it's a big bar, but it's a really good soap. It's down to that, like, that thin. Do you throw soap away when you're done with it? We try to use it all up. Yeah, I do. I put it on top of another one. Yeah, and I try to use it all up. So then I was asked by Bob, you know, you got to go to Hawth Hawthorne.co. And he goes, when you're there, we need about four bars of soap. <laughs> so I said, he goes, you know, it's got to last a couple months. I'm like, sure. four bars of soap. You never have too much soap. So just to reiterate what Tim said, though, um, if there's any confusion, uh, it's you don't have to do a, a subscription. You could do a one-off. And I do highly recommend checking it out. It's, it's well-designed, well-packaged. Well manufactured, we enjoy using it. So it's uh, Hawthorne, H A W T H O R N E dot co. Remember that C O dot co. And if you order, uh, you'll get 10% off if you use our code, which is FOCUS. We should have a new code. FOCUS. Everybody loves, I mean, every, everything is FOCUS. FOCUS. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll have a. Who do you have to. <laughs> you came up with the name, I don't know. Focus Group. You came up with that name. I did. And it was after you and I looked at a whole list of, of names. Oh but, but that was marketing stuff. We're like, hey, what about Focus Groups? Focus right? Group. So anyway, thank you to uh, Hawthorne.co. Visit them at Hawthorne.co and use our code FOCUS. Get 10% off. Check out the stuff. We love it. We've been using it for several weeks now, and we're going to continue. So there you go. Can I say something about, I, I need to say something about our Facebook page and our uh, our social media. So thank you for all of you that follow along on our social media during the live show. We don't monitor it during the show, and I know you have your own conversations. But I did find something out. Somebody alerted me to this because they found out on their own own page. Um, there's stuff that people have sent us that's gone into like a spam folder on Facebook, which I had no idea existed. It's not called spam, but it's called something else. So for those of you who sent stuff two, three, four, ten years ago, we're sorry. <laughs> I went through. I've never heard of this. There are hundreds of of um, listeners trying to interact or ask us questions, and some as far back as 2012. And I went into it because somebody had complained and said I just stumbled across this over on Messenger. And so um, somebody did send us a message about another um, subscription service we had, and they were concerned because they weren't able to get out of the loop and ended up having a monthly subscription that, that kept coming. And uh, so we're not ignoring you if you're listening. I just never knew this existed. Um, we didn't know it existed either. And I, I, I was mortified when I went in there. I thought, oh, my goodness. I couldn't believe the amount of people. And these oh, yeah. things just – so Facebook had some sort of algorithm, I guess, and it would filter it out as if it might have been spam. And puts it in a it different – puts it in a different folder. And so this person – that I was following on, on Facebook, it said, you're not going to believe what I just found. It's another promoter kind of person that does a lot of, a lot of uh, social star stuff or a program like we do. 
And um, so I checked it, and sure enough, I was I was mortified. So we didn't ignore you. Well, <laughs> intentionally. We just, we just, we just um, so I'll have to forward to them. Want to take a quick call from sure. Billy? Hey, Billy, your question is, what is wrong with you guys today? Do, don't we sound okay? <laughs> I, I don't even have a code. <laughs> <laughs> I I sent Tim something last night, which I don't think he can re-distribute, uh, but I found it quite humorous for that All I Want for Christmas. Hey, Tim? What? Now, see, I didn't see that. What did you send me? Uh, the He's... Latino plugging the Christmas lights in. Oh, I did see that. You know, I, uh, someone else has sent me, a friend Matt has sent me that, too. <laughs> He's wrapped up in lights like you did in class, John. Well, but he was nude. Right, and he plugged. No, no, he had, he had a jock on, but all I could say was, "Tis the season." Well, he plugged it in, and then the lights he- heated up his butt. It was between his butt crack, and he couldn't get the light unplugged in time. I don't think he was jumping around. Is that the one? <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, <laughs> John, what's what's going on? Am I seeing you this weekend? I, I'm double checking our our. I was just talking to Tim before we started the show. All our family slash. Take, take all that away. All the holiday obligations I'm still sifting through, but I will have an answer definitively tonight. And uh, if we're around, we are definitely going to see you. All right, because uh, Edwin asked and said, what's going on this weekend? I said, well, it's up to Nash. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to come down to the city. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, well, you might not be we don't <laughs> We don't use Amtrak. Well, good for you. <laughs> Does Amtrak go up where you are? Yeah, but they we don't have to use their service. We got Metro North. Yeah, they could go. They're they're at that point where they could actually go and get on an inexpensive Metro North train and just commute in. I did laugh. You probably have the Vermonter that goes up there, right? Yeah, the, I think after Poughkeepsie, it yeah. went on up to Albany and Montreal. Probably one of, one of the most unreliable, other than the Chicago to St. Louis route. So I said, I said to one of the conductors, she goes, "I'm on the Verm- the Vermonster," <laughs> and I said, "Oh, I said that's never on time." She goes, "Never, never." <laughs> it's like three little trolley cars heading north. Head north With one passenger. Yeah. One passenger. All right, Billy, we're going to roll on. I will. Pro- I promise to email you today and give you all the stats. All right. We'll, we'll play it by ear, as they say in the biz. In the biz. Yeah. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Billy. sir. Later. Merry Christmas. All right. What caught your eye, Mr. Bennett? What caught your eye? Here's what Tim and John found. I don't know how this happened. The title is Let It Snow. When you see the picture, you'll see. Oh, it's an ugly. Well, it's a sweat, one of the Christmas sweater things, right? But what's Santa doing? If you're watching on the video, well, the sweater depicting Santa with lines of cocaine is one of this year's products <laughs> gone wrong. <laughs> Walmart. Now look at that. Look, that that's. <laughs> He's got a straw in his hand, right in the right hand. Wow. Isn't, aren't those lines of cocaine? Am I wrong? So the Christmas sweater depicting Santa, what appears to be lines of cocaine, has been pulled from Walmart's Canadian website. And God darn it, we didn't get to buy one. Wouldn't, you have, wouldn't that would, be a great yeah, one? Yeah, you better believe it. Let It Snow sweater was being offered by a third-party seller, and uh, somebody alerted Walmart, and uh, they immediately pulled it down. It almost made its way into Walmart's USA website, but it was taken down in time, and I put darn. Uh, the sweaters that were sold by the third party through Canada this is their uh, Walmart's response. They do not represent our values and have no place on our website. We've removed these products from our marketplace. We apologize for any unattended offenses that we may have caused. You know, it's hard to get offended. You'd have to know what you're looking at. I mean, if, if a kid looked at it, it's just Santa. Santa sitting in a chair, a little Christmas tree on a table. But as an adult, you're like, oh. <laughs> Let it snow. Let it Look snow. at the eyes. It's a blizzard, yeah. <laughs> Santa's in the middle so of So they said, this is just one of many products this year that have gone wrong mm. in 2019. So, for instance, Burberry just did a, uh, a runway show for their autumn-winter 2019 collection at Fashion Week, and it featured a hoodie with a noose around the neck. Somebody has a noose around their neck. If you go to the next slide of pictures there, you'll see the uh, it's up in the upper oh, left. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine? So, a noose around the neck. The... Um, then Gucci, I remember this one. Had yeah. the uh, they got backlash for the eight hundred and ninety dollars sweater that resembled blackface. Yeah, so Gucci had to pull that sweater off the uh, market. Now who would even buy that thing? Look at that woman. The um, part two in May, Gucci came under fire again for its seven hundred and ninety dollar indie full turban. Everybody thought that it was uh, too much of cultural appropriation, so that's had to be taken down. That's the guy there on the runway yeah, model. Yeah. Would you ever wear a turban, John? No, no. 
And then Macy's in July got in trouble, accused of body shaming moms with those plates. So based upon oh, your serving, portions, portions. you've either got skinny jeans, favorite jeans, or mom jeans, which is the biggest portion on the plate. Macy's pulled that down and said that they were insensitive and missed the mark. So all I said was this is what happens when you don't have adults in the marketing department. Clearly. Like, for example, an adult in the marketing department would have let the Santa sweater go. <laughs> because, again, you ha a kid is not going to get that. Uh, uh, tell me a five-year-old who understands that Santa's getting ready to Didn't do something. Didn't you blow. do one with Amazon where the mother ordered something and, and they didn't realize what it was until the sweater came in and it was the baby doing something. Yes. Or the, if you go to our, if you that go was to, la that was last year, yeah. Or if you go to our Facebook page, the woman was trying to do the nativity scene. I, I have the picture. It's our it's our group picture of the little kid there dressed like a a little wise man, but the mother bought the the um, the sex toy. She thought it was a blow up sheep for the for the nativity scene, but it was a sex doll. <laughs> little kids there with it. <laughs> He's sitting there with his little. <laughs> with a little lamb happens it stuff happens <laughs> stuff happens so that's what caught my eye all right so what caught my eye um many of you have probably watched or heard about this but peloton which is this fitness company that sells this fitness bike or treadmill and then there's a big video monitor on the front and you join a group you know you could ride with other people virtually Stocks on was on fire. They they release a video, a, a new Christmas ad in early November. Te television first. I saw it actually two or three weeks ago, and I thought it was kind of creepy, because the woman was given a bike by her husband, and she's gonna have the journey of her life. She's already fit, and but she could enjoy her bike and and get something out of that. Well, social media picked up on this, and it went viral in a matter of forty eight hours. People were like complaining about the sexist husband who gave her the bike in the ad. Now, these are actors. It's an advertisement, right? People were complaining about her. Peloton then um, pulls the ad. Was he giving her the... So are we going to show the ad? Oh, I didn't... I didn't uh, so was he giving her, for people who don't know them, was he giving her the bike of, honey, I want you to get in shape? That's what people thought. Yeah. They had... Of course, that was not the intent of the people who created no. the spot. It was just, hey, honey, you have a Peloton bike. Here you go. So then one day, the Peloton uh, stock got hit, 10% went down because of this kerfuffle. Um, and then Ryan Reynolds went and hired the actress from the Peloton spot to promote his aviator gin. So she's sitting around with two other friends. And they're like, boy, honey, what a day. And then she's, and then they all, but you look great because that's the end of the Peloton and you look great. It's all this, the reason I brought it up and I wanted it to be a caught our eye, it's, it's all self-feeding. And now, as of yesterday, an investor says Peloton stock is set to plunge to $5 a share because given the frenzy with fitness equipment, someone else is going to come out with a competitor pretty soon and it's, worth, it's going to be worthless. <laughs> Pel See, I, I was just talking to somebody last night at uh, the dinner I went to, and they were talking about how they love the Peloton. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people adore it, a lot of the program, the music. Is it similar to what you do when you do the, the race against other people? But it's something I use called Zwift. So my bike is attached to a trainer, and then I could watch this video right. game and, and train. But the reason I brought this up was, if you're in marketing and advertising today, whoa, boy, how would you have seen this coming? You know that spot was months in the making. Well, it was probably focus grouped. It was. And in fact, the focus groups, when they, what they extracted out of that was people took journeys. They would buy the bike. They would have a year of experience. They would change or transform or they'd love it. And they wanted to replicate the journey. Now, they never saw any of this coming. I don't know that we would have either. Would we have seen some of this coming? Or No. And, and people do get offended over the slightest things and even more so now, I guess. Um, you know, there were a few ads that I was involved with back in the day. Uh, at Subaru that we never saw issues coming with, um, with the way people may have been portrayed or mis misunderstood perhaps what the portrayal was. So I, I, I guess I could see it happening, but I, I do think we become, we become a bit over, over sensitive. Well, another way of, yeah, we, well, I have to agree with that. And the other thing is how long in the pre social media time frame would it have taken for a company to get feed negative feedback about an ad campaign, it would have had to have been a phone call to a customer. I was going to say it was line. a phone call. That's how we would always get them: is the, the phones would start ringing, and then eventually letters would come. But it was the phone calls immediately, and unless it was 
50 or 100, you didn't pay attention to it as really? much. Did I mean, you, you actually would, have numbers? You pay attention to it, but if it hit a certain number, then you were like, okay, this is a bigger issue than we thought. There was a, an ad we did very innocently about a little kid that comes home with his school, East, the bunny he had, he had in grade school. Mom picks him up at school. He's got the little the bunny, little bunny rabbit in the in the box, and uh, the parents that weekend decide they're going to let the bunny go. So they go out into the woods and let the bunny go. And we were, Peter started it, and then we were rabbit murderers and we were animal murderers. And you know that's not the kind of rabbit that gets let go in the wild. And you know that rabbit didn't last one day. Probably got picked up by the coyote or whatever. I mean, it went on and on and on. We had to pull. That's someone actually saying that rabbit got oh, yeah, picked up by a coyote. Oh yeah, that's, you, you put that rabbit to death. You killed that rabbit. How could? How dare you? We had to pull the ad because the, the animal lobby and the and the rabbit lobby went crazy. We had an outback ad with Paul Hogan, who um, the fat people's lobby got upset because they said we made the bad guys were too heavy. And that was fat shaming and da 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 da. Whoa. Martina Navratilova ad. She was the the. Um, the guy who's the ball judge was African-American and the ball came right by him. And we had all this complaint that um, she was she was hitting a ball at a black man. It's like he's a, he's a line, line judge, judge on a tennis, tennis court. Mm. Yeah. You so can't, you can't win. Apparently not. And, and even the best intentions could literally damage the company. I mean, a 10 percent drop in stock, people clamoring to to make fun of it, I guess. What's that old saying? Any press is good press. Sometimes not, right? Yeah, I, you know, I. So then they pull the ad, right? Now, and that's the weird thing. Now they're running a different holiday ad, and the minute I see it, I'm reminded of the original one that got pulled because I know what it looked like. So it's, it's what's CD say? It's awful. Oh, both it's ways. awful both ways. What's the business birthday today? Everyone does celebrity birthday greetings, but the Focus Group is the only show in the universe that celebrates business birthdays. So business birthday, born December 11th, 1874. He died at 78 in 1953, was James Kraft. Kraft. Canadian-American entrepreneur and inventor. He was, he was the inventor of processed cheese. <laughs> That's a that's something. That's something. So Canadian, the original name was Kraft, K-R-A-F-F-T. Huh. German. They got rid of the F. They thought it sold better in America. So it's now it's just Kraft. Kraft instead of Kraft. Okay. Kraft, right. He, uh, so James Kraft started a cheese delivery service in 1903 with $65, $65. He drove a horse and a little wagon named Patty. And I was thinking, is it a paddy wagon? Paddy wagon. I thought paddy wagon was... Well, that's where they put, like, police. when they rounded up criminals and anyway, stuff. Anyway, he had know? a paddy wagon, and he supplied <laughs> Chicago area grocers with cheese he purchased at wholesale. And you have to deliver the cheese in the early morning before it could melt or spoil. It's before refrigerations, like the Brits still have to do. It says, many stores refused to even carry cheese in the summer months because it would rot before it was sold. So his business grew, he, required, he acquired his own dairy, and he addressed the spoilage problem by shredding the cheese, heating it up enough to kill inherent mold or bacteria, and stopping the cheese aging process. He patented the idea as pasteurized cheese and said it had a much longer shelf life than ordinary cheese. Connoisseurs complained and said he literally, quote, killed the cheese, and his competitors all demanded that he be forced to sell his product as embalmed cheese. So the, F, the uh, federal regulations jumped in. They said, no, we're not going to call it embalmed cheese. We do like the idea of it, though, and they're going to call it processed cheese. So James Kraft controlled the company from 1909 to 1953. He introduced many innovative products. It was the largest leading food producers, one of the largest in North America. You remember Velveeta came out in 1928. Miracle Whip, 1933. Macaroni and cheese in the box, 1937. Parquet margarine, 1940. Sliced processed cheese, 1950, and cheese whiz in the can, 1952. Was the, uh, does the par, I remember the parquet ad, did the lid go parquet? Okay. It, the lid of the cheese talk, yeah. He's the king of, he's the king of bad food, right? I guess chemical. Well, you know, I don't say it's bad, but it's processed. U.S. Right? military loved it because it would, it did good in the yeah, wars. Yeah, sure. You, it, you know, that Velveeta, you could open that up a year, year from now, it's still good. <laughs> I always thought this, he was good friends with the founder of the Orange Crush Company. They used to oh, vacation together. Okay. Yeah, they used to vacation together in Wisconsin. His family farm in uh, Stevensville, Ontario, is still there. The Kraft family farm. If any Canadians are listening, it's at Boeing Road and Winger. It's still in the agriculture area. 
Happy birthday, Mr. Kraft. That is a cool one because no matter who you are, you probably at some point had macaroni and cheese with the Kraft. Well, that was a staple, right? When you got it oh, yeah. to live on. Now, I'm, we weren't a Miracle Whip family. We were Hellman's. We were Hellman's too. Yeah. You guys Miracle Whip? Anybody Miracle Whip? No. Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, no way. Wow, this is something. I didn't Usually mind it, though, as like a special treat, but not really? all the time. <laughs> I didn't mind it as a special treat. I yeah. like that. What about Velveeta? No, eh. never really. Never Maybe on the mac it. and the cheese aeros or The aeros something. aerosol cheese, cheese whiz. Guilty pleasure. Yeah, 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 with the crackers. <laughs> and on a Ritz. Just yeah, straight in your mouth. Just the only spray cheese on a Ritz. Bypass the cracker. Drink good point, Steve. Very good point. <laughs> Hey, as uh, many of you know, Deep Discount is a partner of ours here on the Focus Group. We urge you to visit them by going to our site, focusgroupradio.com, and clicking on the Deep Discount logo. Arr, it's a shark, but it sounds like a pirate. That's my little tick. So you get the pirate voice with the shark. Uh, this week, it's last-minute gift sales. Everything's on, site, this, on sale at the site, uh, so when you're there, you can get everything from CDs, DVDs, movies, LPs, books, toys, the whole bit. I call it the one-stop shop for all pop culture and fun things. Um, Tim, what did you pick this week? So I picked this week for, if you have any Grey Gardens fans, and, oh, um, so I picked the latest documentary, which is That Summer. And it's actually, you have to be a fan of, or you have to have watched Grey Gardens. One and two. One and two from the Maisels, not the one that HBO did. The actual one from the uh, 70s that the Maisels did. And then watched The Beals of Grey Gardens, which was a, a counterpart to that, or it, it, it uh, came out after. And then this was, this uh, called That Summer is actually the backstory of what happened. So the, how Grey Gardens got made initially was the uh, Lee Radzikill and Jackie O wanted to have a story done about their family. The producers and everybody go out to uh, to the Hamptons and they find this crazy family, the big and little Edie, and they're like, this is the story. Forget about Lee and Jackie O. This is the story. So yeah. this was what happened beforehand, and it's uh, it's got Andy Warhol in it. Um, this one, last summer. Right, that, it's got, that summer does. Yeah. Right, it's got a little John John, but it was from renowned uh, photographer Peter Bird who chronicled what was going on uh, that summer and all kind of the famous people from Mick Jagger to everybody else that would hang out. Uh, Truman Capote, Andy, uh, Andy Warhol, all hang out in the Hamptons. And uh, Little Edie and Big Edie, you won't get it though unless you know the, the front story from Grey Gardens yeah. and the Beals of Grey Gardens because... You see all their quirkiness on that summer just released in 2017. It's 81 minutes. It's 18. It, it, it's worth it. It's worth it. Pick it up. And I'm always pleased to be the person that introduced him to Greg Gray Gardens. Gardens. Yes, thank you. Um, I picked. So I was watching CBS Sunday Morning, one of my more favorites, yeah. quiet, show. fun show. Had a great interview with Mel Brooks, who's in his 80s now, and uh, you know he was married to Anne Bancroft. I thought he was dead. <laughs> We've been saying that a lot lately about a lot of people. Marlo Thomas, Phil Donahue. Is they're, Marlo Thomas they're, dead? No, they're, according to Wikipedia, they're still alive. So, um, so they were profiling Mel Brooks, and he talked a great deal about Anne Bancroft and his marriage to her. Uh, she passed away um, years ago from uh, cancer. But um, they're releasing a collection of her movies called the Anne Bancroft Collection, and I completely forgot that she was in some really amazing movies like... She won Best Actress in for a leading role in The Miracle Worker, for example. Um, she was in a movie that I saw in the 90s called Agnes of God. She plays this mm. kind of like cigarette-smoking nun that doesn't believe that this woman had an interaction with, with Jesus or God. And there's a whole bunch of comedic roles as well. So I saw the lineup and I thought, you know what? Mel Brooks is really pushing it. He was devoted to her wonderful husband. She was a apparently an amazing wife. And I just thought the Anne Bancroft collection sounds like a really great thing to pick up on because there's eight, I believe there's eight movies in there um, on the on the Blu-ray. This is a good choice. Get them all in one place. Yeah. The new release this week is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood on Blu-ray. It's the ninth film from Quentin Tarantino. It's a serial comic mix of fact and fiction set in 1969 Los Angeles as the sun prepares to set on Hollywood's golden age. Fading TV star Rick Dalton, Leonardo DiCaprio, <laughs> attempts to revive his career, and he and his longtime stunt double and pal Cliff Booth, Brad Pitt, find themselves crossing paths with actress Sharon Tate and several members of the Manson family. I didn't get a chance to see this. Did you see this in the theater? Okay, guys, did anybody see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Yeah, I did. Did you like it? I loved I it. it. You did? It was Do my you like it because Tarantino of, film? I was really? going to say, was it because of Tarantino and his direction? Is that... It, 
Kind of, but it was a totally different than a Tarantino film where there wasn't a ton of dialogue and a lot of stuff jumping back and forth. It was just like a straight-ahead, good, fun movie. And there was no really bad time that they had to overcome it. It was just fun the whole way through. The fun Everything movie looked fun. Every shot was cool. It looked like old California. You know, every little scenic thing was some throwback to the time back then. It was fun. So I say that's, yeah. that's a ringing endorsement. If Garrett, so Garrett's very critical Garrett, Garrett's in a good way of these things. But so, my, I, I have friends who said similar yeah. things like, you got to watch this. It's a really good show. It. Yeah. So head over to focusgroupradio.com. Click on the deep discount logo. It's winter wide sale or last minute gift idea sale. And uh, John recommends the Anne Bancroft collection. I recommend that summer which is a, a prequel to any of the Grey Gardens movies from the Maisels. And the new release this week is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood on Blu-ray. Right, Garrett? Thanks, Deep Discount. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to do something we haven't done in a long time. We're going to have a guest. Todd Evans is going to join us and talk to us about the vibe spray, so stay with us. You're listening to The Focus Group with Tim and John. Learn more at focusgroupradio.com. Focus on the savvy side of 9 to 5 with the Focus Group. Try, really try. Listen, laugh, and learn with Tim and John. I never try anything. I just do it. Hey, welcome back to the Focus Group. John Nash with my good friend and co-host Tim Bennett. Focusgroupradio.com is the URL, the URL. That's the only thing you really need to find out all about us. Audio, video, the whole bit. And we want to say check out on Bund on Tuesdays. Okay. Now, <laughs> sitting next to me, we have uh, I used to a guest. We have a good friend uh, of the show, uh, Todd Evans. He's a partner of on this new product we want to talk about called the Vibe. And I say it's the Vibe Room Energy Clearing Spray. It's not just the Vibe Spray. It's the Room Energy Clearing. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you got it right. So um, before we start, I'm just going to say Tim is definitely a scent guy. And he knows the power of scent, correct? Yes. We know it from advertising and marketing as well. Like, who used to do this all the time? Was it Abercrombie and Fitch? And stores yeah, Abercrombie would have those. Fitch or a lot of realtors used to do um, make cookies in their part in the in their houses, so that when you have an open house, you would go in, and that would kind of your olfactory. Um, Senses would take over that it was a homey, homey, comfortable yep. place because of the smell of cookies. Well, on that topic, I wouldn't sell a house unless I sprayed the vibe first. Just <laughs> really? Because, well, the, the, the whole idea of this. Welcome product. to the show. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting way ahead of ourselves. Sorry. So, yeah, what is the idea behind this? So, the, as you know, and you know, you've met, I think Linda Lauren's been on the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, in yeah. fact, we should sidebar. When she was on the show. Uh, it was one of, one of the worst moments of the, in focus group history. One of the most John. over. No, it was my fault. So she tells this story about. She said she had had a relationship with Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison of the Doors. Oh yeah. And I'm like, oh my god. Now, and we had a rock and roll kid that was a, our producer. We're, we all want to hear about her. I steamroll her, right over. Says, it. tell me how you make. How, tell me how you monetize making money as a. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? I want to hear about her her sex life with Jim Morrison. Why would you want to? How, how do you get money to to get loans for the small business? <laughs> Even she was surprised. You know, she looked. She looked at me with this expression of like, really, like in a good way, in a smile. Well, she we go to break. We all laid into. We still lay. I still get. We still lay so, into yes, about it. We've had Linda on. She's fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. We love her. She's a fourth generation psychic medium, psychic medium. Yeah. and um, she's a lot of fun. And so she's partner on this as well, right? Yeah. Oh, it's her product. Yeah. So she, um, I met her by chance and uh, I'm sort of somebody who was very skeptical, but she completely changed my mind in all ways. Skeptical and, in what way would you mean? And believe skeptical. I had never had that firsthand experience. Always interested in the metaphysical and ghosts or psychic mediums and things like that, but never really had a firsthand experience to, to, you know, make myself like a believer in uh, energy really. right and um, I met her by chance uh, sitting next door to a birthday party one time uh, uh, and uh, had a lot of fun really enjoyed her she was uh, I had just moved to I had just moved to that neighborhood so she became a friend and uh, the more experience I had with her the more amazed that I was and uh, you've heard stories if you ever want me to not shut up just ask me about <laughs> Linda Lawrence stories and uh, I could just tell you one after the other of just amazing experiences so um, 
her office is right below my office. We have an office in the same building. She has a metaphysical center. And um, I'm always interested, you know, I'm a business guy first. I, I always say I'm a business guy first. And um, I'm always want that edge and always looking for help and advice in that way. So I'd often catch Linda in the parking lot and I'd be like, hey, I'm having this big meeting with this client. What do you think of that? She'd be like, oh, they're going to be a great client. And they would be. Or watch out with them paying. And then I would, sure enough, they would be <laughs> to watch out. Well, that's the same them. reading with us every day. <laughs> the, um, watch out for them paying, right? Right? Yeah, Linda needs to come you on. Just by the gallon. <laughs> yeah. So, um, as I learned more about that, you know, I'm sure you've all heard of sage and stuff as something that clears energy. You know, a very so when a lot of people would buy a house, they go through with sage, right? And they, yeah. In fact, one of my um, uh, husband, when he got his apartment, he's like, "Oh, it feels really weird." I'm like, "Get some sage, clear out that energy. It's the previous person's energy." He was like, "Oh my god, that was amazing." So one day, I'm going down into Linda's metaphysical center, and she has this homemade bottle. You know, nothing like this, and she's walking around spraying this stuff. And I said, Oh, what are you doing? And she goes, Oh, it's my grandmother's recipe. She goes, you know, I can't burn sage here. I'll set off the fire alarm. But she goes, this clears the energy. And she goes, and it also raises the vibration so that these people, I guess she was having people in is going to give a better reading. So I was like, Oh, well, that's amazing. Can I get some? And so she made this homemade batch for me. And for a long time, I had this supply of these homemade batch bottles, and so um, this was hand. So this recipe was handed down from a handed down, yeah, from it's her from her. I think grandmother, grandmother. Or grandmother. She would probably have to tell you exactly who, and um, so she always had them, and she had a sort of a homey bottle, and uh, and that's how I sort of got into business with her because I said, look, you know, this would really make a great product, and if if you know Linda, what's different about her than other psychic mediums is she really wants to help people help themselves. So instead of like even if for a reading, if if you've come for a reading on a topic, she won't have you back on the same reading. I've heard her all the time. She'll be like, so tell them, tell them, uh, I've already read her on that. There's nothing more to do. Really? That. They That's have interesting. to, you know, learn for themselves. So she's all about that. And then this is a product. And I said, you know, I'm really interested in this product. And she's like, Todd, I have a full-time job. I'm super busy. She goes, but if it's something you want to pursue, I would be glad to do it with you. So it's been my job to sort of work on the packaging, try and bring it, you know, there was a lot involved in order to bring it to market. Um, to stabilize it. Um, it's a secret recipe, so we also had to just make sure we could get the ingredients. And, I didn't even and, think and about the stabilizing, because it has a shelf life. It has a shelf yeah. life, yeah. So absolutely. does it have a shelf life? Um, it does have a shelf life, but it's right. a long shelf life. Right. I mean, um, but we had to actually get it professionally tested, um, or uh, tested actually, and I had quite a few samples to make sure that it was actually right, wow. and then try it to make sure that it really matched the original. So how? So it does. So it says on here because I. So when I Google this, or when I Googled, so there's a lot of people selling similar things, right? People will sell other sort of things for sprays for rooms or something. But what I saw here that was different it says Reiki infused. What does that mean? Well, um, uh, Linda's a Reiki master, so Reiki, Reiki. I don't. I'm not. Um a Reiki person, so right. I don't know much about Reiki, but it's, it's all about energy, and yeah. everything is it's, energy. It's not even so, hands-on. It's it's like she senses the field around someone, right? Well, Linda, the way she operates is color and energy. So she, if she sees you, she sees colors around you, and right. she interprets them as uh, as what's going to help you. Um, Probably some tech difficulty. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. On. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so it, it's really all about color and energy for you. So Reiki is just energy. So it's also um, that Reiki energy is put within this bottle. I'm hoping Linda's not going to kill me on that one. Um, but um, what I wanted to also just explain, so uh, sage clears energy, right? But that's right. all it does. This also raises the vibration. So the way I use it, and like I said, I'm all about business. I have it right in my conference room. If I'm ever having an important meeting, or even before I came on in here, I made sure I spray. I spray it ahead of time because I want to make sure that everyone's at their best, that we're actually raising and getting the best that we can out of it. Just like the way I would dress for success if I was doing something. You know, you dress good point. right, you want to feel good. good. I also want to sort of stack things in my favor if I absolutely possibly can. You need to make a spray for the mic. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah, maybe maybe it'll work. Maybe it'll work. It also smells nice. So there is there is um, one of the ingredients in it is, is rose oil, and so it has. So that what? So is there a significance of the rose oil versus someone did lemon sense? or citrus? I mean, was oh, there? Oh yes, there absolutely is. Okay. Uh, it's it's very specific ingredients because when we actually were getting it manufactured, um, quite a few of them were not the right you know formulation to the same degree. We give them the ingredients, of course, but. Um, it, it, 
everything, what I've learned through Linda is it's really all about energy, right? Um, and what I want to also say about this, so the number one seller is the travel spray. And, you know, when you go into oh. a, um, a store, have you ever gone into a store and you're like, oh, my God, that store's not going to last? Or yeah. it's really dead here. Right. This is something, you know, and it's the same with... Um, feng shui it's the same with anything in medical there's always a solution for things right and um for me in particular as i've gotten into metaphysics the more i meditate the more i'm in tune to energy the more energy bothers me so if i go somewhere especially a hotel room i mean i've gone with my husband i'm like oh my god jeffrey i can't stay in this that's hotel. that's a booby trap a hotel no, room he'll be like, think about how many people have cycled through the hotel absolutely. room right? and he'll be like well what do you mean i'm like people had arguments or something i just i'm not going to be able to stay here and um so he, fortunately he usually remembers the vibe spray i'm a very absent-minded person actually in other ways but now i just have it so in he everything. saves the day and, and that way you don't have to go to the front desk and say we got to change rooms because yeah. i don't like the so you if you have your dog with you and so would you so you would so if you and jeffrey you're traveling you you get a bad feeling for the room or you're just like something some bad en energy in here so you would spray this and then how is spray it go get a starbucks come back it's a completely different feeling but it's not even about that so i do it you know once you get used to it i do it for anything because i just want i do want to raise that vibration we do it in my office you know before I knew about this, when no one was there on the weekend, I often would go into my office and sage the whole office because, you know, the advertising business. I it do. It can often be very negative, right? Even positive things in it. And, yeah. um... <laughs> You know, we did this by the gallon, John. <laughs> no, you do. I mean, the minute you say that, I Linda's like gonna that. kill me. But I have a water vacuum, and once in a blue moon, I take the bottle and I just pour it into the and water and vacuum everything. and vacuum the whole house. And it. What it I like amazing. about it, whenever you when you've sprayed it, is it has a nice scent. It doesn't. Um, it's not overwhelming. It's not cloying, and it doesn't linger too long. It's a very nice freshener. So it's all natural. I, I'm not into scents myself because I find like I don't. I'm worried about what I might be. I love a scent. Oh, Tim is candles. So like anything yeah, that changes a mood. So if so, this is all made in the U.S. And is it how how would you buy it, and what's the cost? Okay, it's uh, the large bottle is nineteen ninety nine, and the travel size is nine ninety nine. The okay. best way to buy it is through lindalauren.com, her site. She has a store there. So if you're um, watching on the video, um, you'll see the. Uh the couple of the slides have the uh, lindalauren.com. Is that where you would go and order that, it? That would be the best place right. for us. But you can also get it on Etsy. You can also get it on Amazon.com. Yeah, there it is. There. Um, it's a, it's the number one seller of all our products, too. It really does really? sell. Once people use it, they come and come again. And I find it even myself. Like I'm like, ooh, I better stock up on some of this stuff. Well, I saw her on a – there was a clip I saw probably a couple months ago where she was she was on Channel 4 or something in the New York affiliate maybe. or And she was spraying it in the studio, and I was laughing because she was going around and everything and doing it, and the, and the anchors were were, uh, were egging around. She was like, ah. She's – <laughs> think about a studio. Think about a studio and some of the people that you bring into it, and then you're left with their energy. Right. Right. And I've had some wackadoodle people in my office too. It's as soon as they're gone, I'm like, spray that office, and I'm going to get caught. I'll say, I, 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 the interesting thing about the energy to me is, if anybody is a has had sports massage or massage therapy, it's a hands-on thing. Mm -hmm. And if you ever talk to a massage therapist. And you, you have a, a substantive conversation. They I often say to some of the guys that I've had massage me, how many massages are you capable of a day? And the guy goes, well, there's the whole physical aspect of your physical energy. But he said there's the whole energistic aspect. And you'll talk to a therapist who will say there's nothing worse than, and they can't control it, is having someone on the table who something's off and it, it's not that it's physical or that they're dressed or you know there's something off and and it's and it they pick up that energy Absolutely. from the massage and so you and how do they get rid of it and how do they cleanse the room of that feeling it's fascinating and uh, you know you don't at first you don't think about it but you think yeah people have an R about them, right? Everybody does, right? People you like, you instantly like, you instantly like. But what I think, what I like about this product, a lot, a lot like color therapy, because she does a lot with um, energy art, Linda Lauren's energy art, which is amazing. But it works whether you believe in it or not, right? Well, that's so the cool I'm part. I'm having my yeah. family over who might not believe in this thing, and I know it can be contentious at Christmas. <laughs> I spray the whole room. And I find that... And they don't know it. They, oh, I know. I, yeah, because I'm not... Um, yeah, I'm not going to go and say I'm worried about, you know, something being contentious or even a wow, business your meeting. energy is going right? to muck up the table. <laughs> Pull it out. 
Yeah, yeah no. I, I don't hear you. <laughs> but Jeffrey and I are often amazed. He's like, oh, you're right. It wasn't contentious at all. So I chalk it up to the vibe. But I, I really think that um, if people knew more, which is why I'm here, if more and more people knew about it, the more... Um, people would use it. And like realtors, I never thought of, but <laughs> when you just thought of it, I well, thought, Well, because oh, it would be a great space, thing for realtors. It would be a good, be good to target, yeah. And if you're selling and you're still showing your place, before you know people are coming over, you walk yeah. around and you do that so that you neutralize the... If a, if, if a previous sale had fallen through, something go in and clean... Clean it out. Absolutely. Um, even my. I'm already. I'm already sold on the Christmas dinner aspect. <laughs> yeah, you better, alone. I'm already thinking group you dinners. Get two gallons. Yeah. The um. So, you, do you think a lot of it? You would mention meditation. Mm -hmm. So, do you is is. Does meditation make you more intuitive? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. No, no doubt about. It. I'm a very intuitive person now, and I got to say, before I knew meditation. Uh, about meditation and really how it took me a long time to learn to meditate properly. Oh, yeah. But um, yeah. I am very much way more intuitive at this point. Now. I'm still, I, I meditate every day, though. I'm not sure I'm capable of meditation. And, and I'll say it this way a friend, I mentioned it to a yoga instructor of mine. He said, No, he goes, You cycle. He said, you're on your bike for two or three hours at a kick. He goes, that's a form of meditation. 100%. But it's not the discipline of sitting and peacefully composing your thoughts and being alone. And, you know, what? how long do you well, do? 10 or 15 minutes? 20 minutes. I do 20, 20 minutes, minutes okay. at night. I, I set a timer. I usually do 20 minutes. Um, I'll tell you, I've, I've even brought, you know, I've brought all of metaphysics. I'm in a whole different business, as you guys know, in LGBT media. And at a certain point in my life, I said, you know, here I do all these personal practices. And then I don't really do it in the office. Yeah. And I finally brought it into the office. So if you go in my conference room, well, I have a vision board of the accounts that I want to bring in. Um, the vibe is definitely on the side on a buffet there. For I have um, color and um, energy art just to encourage sales, to encourage good business. And um, like I say, I always look at things from the business angle, but it's usually for, I hate to say this, but it's for me personally because I want to succeed and I want to put my best foot forward. So I want to try and have everything stacked in my favor if I can. That's sort of how I really got mostly involved with Linda uh, to begin. Yeah, I think it's very smart. I, when I talked to you a couple months ago, you mentioned meditation. And so I tried that weekend. And I would like to be more consistent with it and do it every day if I can. John and I have a couple of other business partners that we work with that, that swear by by meditation as well. My confusion was, Are you? do you do it yourself or do you do one of these self-guided like a guided meditation. I started, YouTube has lots of things you can type in, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or do you have your own? Um, I started with guided method. because it took me a long time to do it. I also, when I started, I did it at the wrong time for me. Everybody is different. So I started in the morning thinking, oh, I'm going to create my yeah, day. That's what I did. Right? Yeah. I'm not, I'm ready to jump out of bed and go in the morning. So I learned for me and Linda told me, she's like, Todd, that's not going to work for you. You're not that type of person. So it's a wind down? I do it down? after work, a wind down. Interesting. So usually Jeffrey and I get home from work. Hey, what's going on? We're like, you know what? Let's go meditate. He goes to his office. I go to my office, come back from that. Then we're like ready. Oh, I, I've learned routine. some. Uh, you guys, you and Jeffrey have been amazing influences in my business career and personal life. And I remember one time I was on the phone with you or Jeffrey. I think it was Jeffrey. And it, the day was going south of the border. And he could tell in my voice. He said, Johnny goes, we're going to wrap up this call and you're going to call me back in half an hour. But I want you to leave your office, go anywhere but the space you're in. And I want you to take 10 deep, full breaths. He goes, don't skimp. Just and he goes, I do it. I felt amazingly better. And that was that's a simple. That's that's like the simplest thing in the world. I call him back. He's like, There we go. <laughs> well, you know, it all makes sense. And I know I credit Linda with changing my life in that way. And then my ripple passing it on to him. And then we're passing it on yep. to you. And what I was going to say about meditation, I forgot to say though. So now in my office, we uh, get in. We get our day started. Um, at 10 o'clock, we all go into the conference room. I usually spray the vibe first before they get there because I get it set up for me and what my objective is. And then we do a 10-minute meditation. We do a guided one with uh, the app Calm. Yeah, which is I've a, heard of that. It's a really yeah. good one, I have to say. C-O-M. C-A-L-M. C-O-Calm. Calm. And they have all different types, so you can play around with I haven't really not played around with it that much, but Linda's the one who recommended me that for the office because it's a little different. You're not meditating to download. You're sort of meditating with a purpose, and we want to sort of get that energy moving in the right direction for us. So how does somebody handle it when you just can't help that you've had a 
Mm. Horrible day. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you lost an account. Maybe you I, lost a loved if one. If it was Todd and Jeffrey, relationship. They they obviously walked out without their shields up that morning. Yep. And so you, if, to give you a Star Trek analogy, one time Jeffrey and Todd, I was having one of those days, and and they're like, it's over. It's over. He walked out without your shields up, and I'm like, Sh and and then I think it was you. It's just, it's just like Star Trek. Shields up. <laughs> shields so up. What do you do? Well, I, that that's a mental game of saying. You will not, this, I have a little if, barrier. If everything's energy, your energy, right? If Linda sees color and energy, this is this aura that's around you. It's all energy. And sometimes you're not prepared for the day, right? You walk out the door, you're just there. And it's almost like your windows are open. Linda used to say as a psychic for her, your it's, windows it's completely are open. different. I like that one. Up everything in right. you know, a way that I don't. Um, and she's like, you've got to put shields up. And she said it the same way. So that another thing from Linda. Pretend it's Starbuck, Starbuck, um, Star Trek. Star Trek. <laughs> um, Starbucks. <laughs> put your shields up and just, I picture, I picture mirrors facing out so that my energy is going out and I'm not taking in other people's energy. And, um, you know, you, everyone's had it in the office when you have this great day, you come in the office and then the one employee comes in last and it's like a black cloud over their head. Oh yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it instantly now. You know, when you, the more and more you're in tune to energy, the more you pick up those vibes. And I've even stopped sometimes. So what do you do then if an employee comes um, in like that? Do you I'll just... say, hey, let me meet you in the conference room and I'll be, and I'll go in. I don't want to say any names. And I'll be like, listen, do you need to go hey. home? Well, you know, what's happened today? Let me meet you in the conference room. whole office to be infected with that. Right. And it's like, hey, maybe you need to take take some personal time or just like what happened to you. Go outside. Or if it was me, I'd be like, uh, I'm going to just spray <laughs> this and I'm going to think. Or would you just ignore them? No. Well, you can't ignore them. I think if you're mindful and, and if you if you encourage mindfulness, you can't ignore it. And I have, you know, I only have six employees, so it's a little different story. If you're in a giant office, yeah, that's right, true. Then that's, true. that's where you try and control your own space. So you have your shields up, and it extends to your space, and you go about your little day, and you're like, "I'm rubber, you're glue. I'm not going to take on any of that." Um, you know, uh, Jeffrey's somebody who's very sensitive, especially I've noticed in our 12-year relationship, as he's gotten more into meditation, he's more open. And I often will say when he has one, I'm like, did you have your shield? I'm like, I didn't have my shields up. I didn't have the vibe spray with me. I wasn't, you know, we didn't, uh, you know, it's like, uh, I feel like, oh, I'm a bad student today because I, you know, I consider myself a student. So everything that you're hearing today is from a student from what I consider my master, master of teaching Linda. is Linda, really an amazing person to, um, to, to help us help ourselves because yeah. that's all you can really do in a day. You're but it, it's, it's habits. You're... Like, so Todd's created these very positive habits with the help of Linda and with Jeffrey of at night, I will clear my mind. I will meditate. And you, and I'm amazed. You'll go to sleep. And if you get seven or eight hours, you're going to wake up and you're, you, you're creating a reality, right? Your, your new your new day is going to be this. When I've tried to be more mindful, other than letting the world kind of what's the it's the uh, the dog the tail wagging the dog. It's kind of the it's that kind of thing where it, that's the bad day. That's when the tail wags the dog, right? Yeah. Well, on my business, we deal with publishers, and most of all they want is more ads, right? So we well, would end up running around chasing their energy in their day instead of creating the way we want our day to go. And, um, and we want the same thing, so it wasn't that we were at cross purposes, so it's just a matter of directing that current, making Into the float right. in your, yeah. your best interest. Does Linda still do readings? Um, I'm sure she does. You would just have to go to her, you know, uh, yeah. call her office or, or um, um, you know, make an appointment and, and see. She's got a busy schedule, so. Okay. Um, so um, is there time to order this for Christmas? If absolutely. You want to do it for gifts? Absolutely. It's a great, think about, you know, I went to the Short Hills Mall the other day to get stocking stuffers because my mom's mall. coming, yeah. right? I, and you think you could go through a giant mall like that and come out with bags of stocking yep. stuffers. I came home with nothing. Isn't it amazing? And uh, amazing. so um, the, the travel size I recommend the most only because you can take it with it's you. It's small. It's it convenient. security yeah. in, um, in, it's in the, uh, the right airport. amount of liquid, right? This is the household size. Okay. <laughs> no, I go through those. Though. I mean, I'm somebody who really uses it. So like I said, I have a water vacuum. I pour half the bottle into it. I love that idea. For me, it's so, um, so head over to lindalauren.com. There's still time to order this and get it uh, for the holidays if you're looking for a unique gift. For people, it's the vibe. It's it's a, um, I'll see if I can read it without my glasses. It's room energy and cle clearing spray. 100%. Is that what I said? Yes. Said right? It's Reiki infused, which um, adds an extra boost of energy. And so, and it smells great. I mean, we've, uh, we've cleansed the room here, John. And yeah. Look at me. You have a guest after me. Look at me. Like made. 
Well, the next, the next, the next show is going to be through oh, the okay. ceiling. There's no doubt about Off the that. Charts. Off the Gina charts. Martini yeah. would say. So, thank you, Todd Evans, and thanks for introducing thank us to the to the Todd's break. Thanks to all thank you, you, Linda for, Lauren. Thank you, Linda Lauren. dot com. Linda Lauren. dot com. L i n d a l a u r e r e n. dot com. And uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks to all of you who are listening to our podcast on Tuesday, which is TFG Unbuttoned. Thanks to our boys in the booth, Steve and Garrett. Thank you, John. Thanks to our friends at Deep Discount. And um, thank you, Todd. What did I forget? Did I forget something? Good. A Hawthorne.co. Oh, and Hawthorne.co. <laughs> yeah, there's still time Still time to get... Uh, focus. F-O-C-U-S. Yeah, focus. Code focus gives you 10% at Hawthorne.co for men's grooming products and colognes and shampoos and such. So everybody have a great week. Remember, arrive alive. Don't text and drive. I did it wrong. You did it right. You just reversed the order. Reverse the order. <laughs> It's The Focus Group with Tim Bennett and John Nash. Accessible on all platforms. Subscribe, like, and rate us on your platform of choice. Learn more at focusgroupradio.com. Who do you have to blow to get a drink around here?